righty, we are just about at 530. Um, again, I know a lot of you have been on for quite a few sessions already. So just a reminder that this is a family program. Keep all your questions on topic. Um, be sure to use that Q&A or chat box if any questions come to mind. Um, we're continuing with the Ethical Anglers series this evening. Um, this topic is community ponds. So my name is Nicole Hamlin. I am the volunteer coordinator with the Department of Wildlife. I'll be talking a little bit about the Southern region ponds. Then I'll pass it over to Jan. He's your Western region angler education coordinator and he'll talk about some Western region ponds. And then we'll touch a little bit on Eastern region as well. So for today's presentation, we will be using Google Earth. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of a virtual tour of where all of these places are geographically in relation to you. So like I said, we are going to start in the Southern region. We are starting at Sunset Park Pond. So as we zoom in here, you will see Sunset Park Pond outlined as well as a few stops around it. Um, I've made a few stops around this pond. We're going to talk about some different topics that while they're applicable to Sunset Park, they are also applicable to all the community ponds that we'll go over today. We're just using Sunset Park as an example. So after we go on a tour around Sunset Park, I'll touch on the other locations in Southern Nevada and then we'll hit some other locations in other parts of the state. So Sunset Park, I'll zoom out a little. You'll see is right near McCarran Airport over here. It's kind of in like the southeastern part of the valley, really close to the Endow office actually. Um, but at our first stop at Sunset Park, the first question, everyone comes out to the pond and what's in it, right? What's going on out here? In this pond, we have rainbow trout, channel catfish, bluegill sunfish, green sunfish, largemouth bass, and the common carp. A lot of these species are stocked at different times throughout the year. And a lot of these species are in other ponds in the state. So it's not just Sunset Park. These are very common species to be stocked statewide. Um, so the next question is, what does it matter? What's in the pond? Why do we care? Um, and there's two reasons. So the reason we need to know what's in the pond is because that's what will make us one, a responsible angler and two, a more successful angler. Um, I say responsible because um, depending on what you're fishing for, some species might have different limits. There might be different lure or bait regulations. So knowing what you can and cannot do in relation to your target species is very important. And in order to find out all that information, we have a very thorough fishing guide. You can either access that guide online. We'll drop the link in the chat. Um, if you've been with us a couple days prior, then you might already have that link, but you can also pick up a physical copy, which I prefer um, at one of the Endow offices. So that's the first reason. The second reason, um, thanks Abby. Abby just shared that in the chat for you. The second reason being a successful angler, you need to know what you're fishing for so you can better target them. For example, you see we have both rainbow trout and channel catfish in this pond. If you wanna catch a channel catfish, but you're fishing at the top of the water column, you're probably not gonna find a catfish, right? We need to be able to identify these fish. A catfish is a benthic feeder. That's why it has the barbels on the side. It's gonna be closer to the bottom. So understanding what is in the pond and understanding the behavior of those species is crucial. Um, also in the fishing guide, it's pages, I think 16 and 17. It goes over descriptions of all of these fish, how to identify them, um, because you can see right here, like the bluegill sunfish and the green sunfish at first glance, you might think they're the same thing. So the, the guide will help you distinguish between the two. Okay, next stop, stop number two. This is called Before You Fish. So I'm using Google, Google Earth just to give you some different vantage points around the pond. So this is another side of the pond. Um, I say before you fish, and I mean to make sure that we're following all the rules and regulations. So we're joined here um, by an endow game warden. He's going to go over a couple of the main things that they see while they're out there. So I'll play this video for you. Let me, let me make sure I'm sharing my sound. Okay. Let me open this. 
name's Thomas Hamlin. I'm a game warden with the Nevada Department of Wildlife. I'm out here at Sunset Park. Uh, it's a great place for families to come and fish. Um, just make sure before you come, you purchase your fishing license and you pick up a regulation book. These books are available online or in our Endow office. You can also purchase your fishing license online or at our Endow office. Um, if you see us out here on patrol, make sure you say hi. Uh, a few things to remember, obviously you buy your fishing license, make sure you have it on you. Uh, that fishing license allows you to have two poles only in the water and at a place like Sunset Park, make sure you check the limit regulations. There's only three fish per person allowed. All right, so he touched on a couple important things there. Um, first off, make sure you buy that fishing license. You can easily buy it on our licensing website and I'll have Avi drop that in the chat as well. It's super user-friendly, mobile-friendly. So if you forget and you're at the pond, you can do it while you're there. You can also come into our office. We'd love to see you there, buy your license in person, pick up the guide in person. Um, he also mentioned a couple of those like specific regulations, limits, whatnot, again, all in the guide. And if you do see them out there, definitely say hi. If you aren't sure where your regional office is, please ask us and we can direct you to the closest one. All right, stop number three where to fish. Um, this is kind of a general stop just to go over a few recommendations. I zoomed in here. It's This is a 360 photo on Google. On Google Earth, it isn't the best quality yet. So this is a brand new or new-ish addition to Sunset Park. That's um, one of their fishing piers. Not all ponds will have a fishing pier, but a lot of them will have um, nice shorelines, maybe a jetty, uh, maybe a dock, what have you. But this, this picture that I'll click on this is a panoramic from that fishing pier. And while there's nothing wrong with the shorelines, this is just another opportunity to maybe hit some deeper water, cast your line out further. Um, but I stop and say where to fish because um, we really, at these ponds, they really try to make them as ex uh, accessible as possible to everyone. So I'll kind of move it around a little bit. You'll see if I zoom out, this shoreline is open all the way around, there's plenty of room to spread out. A lot of the ponds might even be paved all the way around. I'll show you a couple examples of those later on the tour. Some of them might have gravel along the sides of well-maintained. Others may be grassy, but there are always an abundance of shade structures, benches, um, different places to stop off with your family. One thing that we do like to recommend, especially for novice anglers or maybe people fishing with their children is if possible, find a nice open space with the least amount of bushes or trees behind you because it is very common to get your line snagged in a tree. So the less, less obstacles, the better. Um, another thing about where to fish, always be um, respectful of other anglers. You never wanna come up on someone else while they're already fishing. Try to spread out as best that you can. Number four, this is one of my favorite stops, sights and sounds, um, because I like to emphasize that you don't have to fish at the ponds. The ponds are a great place just to visit, maybe walk around, exercise, and also great places to view other wildlife. At Sunset Park and many other ponds, there are an abundance of birds, waterfowl, um, and so I call it the sights and sounds. This is a great place to start birding, practice your birding skills, bring some binoculars, a bird identification book, um, even a camera. The last time I was at Sunset Park, I took this video and I'll play it for you. And you'll hear a whole bunch of different sounds in just about 20 seconds. Um, if you are interested in birding, we have an entire YouTube playlist that goes over intro to birding skills, talks about different categories of birds, what to look for or what you need, and we can share that resource with you as well. So I'll play this for you real quick. You'll definitely hear the geese.
All right, so that's just another suggestion how to take advantage of these community ponds, um, especially if you do wanna bring out your family. Some of you like fishing, some of you don't. There's stuff for everyone to do. Kind of moving on from the additional wildlife um, is the, the idea of feeding wildlife. So this is something that can happen directly or indirectly at community ponds. I know almost every time I go out there, and many of you have probably seen the same thing, um, people are inclined to toss popcorn or breadcrumbs or snacks, especially at the birds, sometimes at the fish, carp gobble up that stuff as well. Um, but it's something that is never okay. And that's for, for many reasons, but mostly because it's extremely harmful to the wildlife and the environment. Um, but it can also result in death for some of these animals. So um, we're also we're joined again by another Endow staff. Her name is Lauren McLeod. She is our urban wildlife coordinator. So she's gonna briefly tell us um, about some of the negative impacts of feeding wildlife. Sometimes, you know, you think you're doing them a favor, giving them a snack, but in no circumstances is it recommended. And I also like to bring up, this happens intentionally, but also unintentionally. So maybe you weren't actually feeding the wildlife, but you tossed your trash and it missed the trash can and so on. And these, these animals just get habituated to it. So the most, the, the best that we can do to eliminate those opportunities, the better. So I'll play this. For you, this is Warren. Sounds good. Although feeding and interacting with waterfowl, like these ducks and geese, can be enjoyable, this seemingly generous act can often do more harm than good. Food handouts discourage animals from searching for food on their own and can prevent them from consuming the essential nutrients that are found in a natural diet. They will lose their fear of humans and potential predators and can be lured to environments that are unable large concentrations of ducks, promoting competition and aggression among these birds, and an overall decrease in water quality from excessive species. Waterfowl may also become reluctant to migrate and then struggle to survive as temperatures rise and fall. Giving these animals their space and watching them from a distance is a really great alternative to food handouts. So next time you're visiting your favorite pond, let's hold the bread and keep wildlife wild. You can see in that video that the birds are super attracted to Lauren swimming up behind her, kind of congregating. Um, that's a sign of their habituation already. So if we can all do our part to eliminate that, discourage that, hopefully we can see a lot less of those habits forming. All right, our last stop at Sunset Park also has to do with keeping wildlife safe and and protecting the environment. Um, this is our fishing line receptacle stop. So in this, in this Google Earth image, you see this yellow tube looking thing. And this is an older version of our fishing line receptacles. Fishing line receptacles um, are essentially recycling bins for used fishing line. When you're fishing, it is not uncommon um, to have to replace your line, cut your line, tie on a new lure, maybe it broke from the Vegas sun, you snagged it, it gets messy, you have to cut it off. Super common, um, but unfortunately it's also super common for that kind of material to be left behind. Um, it's easy to forget, it's hard to see, um, but we need to do our best to make sure that we're keeping track of it. So in order to help those efforts to eliminate that kind of pollution on the landscape, these fishing line receptacles are installed around this pond. Um, you can see we try to make it super convenient. I'll move this around. You can see how close it is to the shoreline here. So just a couple steps and you can toss that used line into these receptacles. Um, like I said, this is an old one. We have brand new, nice looking ones all around Sunset Park. We had recently had an Eagle Scout and his troop come out and revamp the whole place. They placed them all around the pond. So I'll have you watch this video. Um, our Eagle Scout's name was Logan and he'll tell you a little bit about what he did and why he did it.
Early on a relatively quiet Saturday morning in Las Vegas, a group of scouts from Troop 770 made their way to Sunset Park. Led by Eagle Scout candidate Logan Michael, the scouts were on a mission to clean up the shoreline of the park's lake, but not in the way one might imagine. So the purpose of the project is where uh, we constructed and fastened these 10 fishing line receptacles onto the um, pre-put up posts in order to help reduce the amount of fishing line that is being polluted um, into the Sunset Park Pond. We had an awesome scout project and they redid some of our old fishing line receptacles. We did have about nine that were around the park and we actually were able to add a couple more. So now we have 12 that go all around the park. They cut the pipe, they uh, put the caps on. There's even a bottom uh, that pops open so that it's easy to get any of the fishing line out. There is park maintenance and they are excited to have these as well as the garbage cans. It's a little smaller so the fishing line doesn't go out and about if the birds um, get into the garbage. And when park maintenance cleans up, they also check the receptacles. When I chose my Eagle Scout project, I wanted something that I could remember it by. And I've always loved fishing. And when I uh, came here for the first time, it amazed me how much pollution was in the lake. And I uh, thought that I needed to do a project in order to fix that. Looking to the future, Logan hopes he can return to Sunset Park in 20 years or so and find the monofilament recycling bins he and his fellow scouts installed still serving the people and wildlife who frequent the park. We are super grateful for Logan and his troop for fixing up these receptacles. Um, of course, not all the ponds are equipped with these yet. It's definitely something that we'd like to do. That's a great goal. Um, so in the meantime, do your best to collect that, spread the word, dispose of it in a trash can nearby, better yet, take it home and dispose of it. Um, but if you are interested in perhaps installing something like this, doing some volunteer work at a pond close to you, definitely let us know and, and we'd like to work with you on it. All right, that is the Sunset Park Pond Tour. Now that we've kind of gone around some basics, I'm going to fly around to a couple other locations in Southern Nevada, just briefly touch on them so we can um, just get familiar where they are geographically and then we'll head up to the Western region. So moving north, this is, I would say pretty central in Las Vegas. This is Lorenzi Park. Um, there's a pond here, I'll zoom out a little. It's just north of the 95 here. You'll see this is an example of a pond where the paved sidewalk kind of goes all the way around it. So lots of good opportunities uh, for shoreline fishing. This is also a pond that is regularly stocked. You'll find rainbow trout, channel catfish, bluegill sunfish, what have you. Then we're gonna go super Northwest to the edge of the valley. This is Floyd Lamb Park. There's a couple different ponds here. Um, this is one where the grass actually comes up to the side of the ponds. So again, plenty of room to spread out. This one's actually a little bit bigger, but um, this would be one where I would suggest carefully picking your fishing spot, especially if you're with novice anglers or children. There's a lot of shrubs, a lot of trees, lots of places to get your line stuck if you're not used to casting yet. So choose your place wisely. Um, I will say this is a great uh, park to walk around as well and lots of great birding opportunities. Although there is not a sidewalk that goes right up against the pond, you'll see back here, it goes around the park. This is also a really popular place um, for community pond fishing for, for bass and catfish. All right, complete opposite side of the valley. We're heading to Boulder City. Um, this is a really nice, well-kept pond out in Boulder City. Um, if you haven't been out to Boulder City before, this is just one of the many cool places that you could stop. It's a really cute little town. This one has a great sidewalk that goes all the way around the pond. Um, I often see people out here just out to exercise, walk around, check out the waterfowl, um, but lots of benches too, great places to park down here, walk up and hopefully catch a bluegill, a rainbow trout or a catfish. 
All right, two more in Southern region, but we're headed out of the valley all the way to Beatty, Nevada. There is not much going on out here in Beatty, but there is a community pond. And this pond is actually south of town. So there's no amenities down here at the pond. Whatever you need, bathroom, snacks, make sure you stop into town first before you head south. And you'll see um, this one, you can pull in, pull your car around, come up to the shoreline and throw your line in. So not as, um, not like the Boulder City one where it's all well kept with the sidewalk and everything, but still a great opportunity, maybe a fun day trip out of Las Vegas. And our last stop going east, almost to the Utah border, we have Mesquite. This is Hathen Lane Park. This reminds me of the Boulder City Pond. It has that path all the way around, um, easily accessible right there in town in Mesquite. Again, it would be a fun day trip from Las Vegas. Um, it's stocked a couple times a year, rainbow trout, channel catfish. Um, just an idea to get out of the valley a little bit. But with that, I'll zoom out and I'm gonna hand it over to Jan and we're gonna head to the Western region. Thank you. All right, so first up, um, we'll start at uh, Mitch Park Pond, um, which is uh, located uh, just outside of Gardnerville, or I guess inside Gardnerville. Um, it is planted um, with rainbow trout typically in the spring and fall. Um, there are several other species in this pond, um, but the, definitely the primary game fish are the trout there. Um, there's certainly some, some bass, but um, there's not a lot of people that will target them there. Um, definitely more relied on a put and take fishery for uh, the trout for sure. Um, great spot, it's a little off. Um, meaning uh, the color of the water uh, tends to be a little turbid. So um, it, it can be a little intimidating, but it, um, it's definitely a good spot to fish, especially uh, like most of our community ponds right around uh, when they're stocked. Next up. We are headed to Wilson Commons Pond, which is out in Washoe Valley. Um, we're gonna talk about a couple ponds out here. Um, this one is um, very much like Mitch Park Pond, planted um, pretty heavily in the spring and fall. Um, it does have, um, I have seen bass in there. There are definitely some sunfish or bluegill, like, like the green sunfish. Um, but the primary species, again, or at least the game fish, is going to be uh, the rainbow trout that are, um, that are in there. I haven't seen Sacramento perch, but I have certainly seen carp. And they, I feel like, end up in just about every water. Um, Again, uh, it, it's similar to Mitch and it does get warm in the summertime, so we do kind of halt stocking um, then. Uh, next. Perfect, Davis Creek Park Pond. Um, this one is very unique. Also, I'd call it in Washoe Valley, kind of the northern part of Washoe Valley up by Bowers Mansion. Um, unique in the sense that there is actually camping at the lake. So, um, so it kind of falls into the community pond category because of how it's managed and kind of access, but um, there are a limited number of camp spots right at the lake. Um, this one, um, you know, we have low water years, so it, it can dry up. We definitely have um, some issues with that, but um, it, it tends to rebound pretty quick. Um, I have a friend that lives in the area and I get the updates pretty often on that one. So um, pretty healthy fishery, and again, um, spring and fall for, for most of the action, and then summertime slows for, for stocking. All right, next. Head up to Maryland's Pond. And Maryland's Pond is not like the first uh, few that we looked at in the sense that um, it does get stocked from um, really summer through the fall. So a little bit higher elevation. It's located there um, just off Mount Rose Highway, um, pretty, pretty well above, um, above Reno. Um, and uh, the water uh, comes from Galena Creek. Um, it's actually um, on site of Nevada's first uh, fish hatchery. Um, so the first hatchery, Mount Rose Fish Hatchery, is up there and one of the grow out ponds um, is where Maryland's Pond now sits. So 
um, cold water most of the year, which enables us to plant trout um, in the summer. So uh, spring, summer, and fall, um, it gets uh, quite a few trout. And again, colder water just keeps them pretty happy. Um, again, manage like the, the put and take fishery. So there's, there's quite a few fish that go into this. Um, it does clo close in the winter. So um, some of our, uh, our ponds are, are open in the, in the wintertime, depending on the season and the intensity of the winter. But um, this one is not. This one always freezes just about. And, uh, they do close this one off in the winter. Next up is Crystal Peak Park Pond. Um, and this is one um, that is um, more managed these days by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Um, it is planted um, more often with Lahontan cutthroat trout, and it's managed um, that way because it is connected to the Truckee River. So the Truckee is what feeds it, and it goes in and out of the Truckee, um, or in and out of the ponds. Um, so it does receive uh, Lahontan cutthroat trout. Um, my favorite part about this pond um, is it's just far enough outside of Reno. So it's located there um, in Verdi. Um, so headed up towards the California state line um, where it doesn't get a whole bunch of people on it. Um, now the fishing is for the Lahontan cutthroat is, isn't amazing. However, there is an incredible population of green sunfish in this pond. So um, you know, when I think about taking my kids out, this is the first one that I think of just because they're so eager to eat fly or bait or jigs or bear hooks sometimes. So um, it, it's just a, just a great spot to, to, to bend a rod. So um, excellent spot. And again, trout fishing so-so, but certainly green sunfish in there that are, are eager to eat. And next we are off to Virginia Lake. Now, I feel like this is about as community pond or urban um, as our community ponds get. Um, right in the middle of town, um, you can kind of see in the picture up there, the background, it's the Atlantis Casino. Um, pretty neat fishery. And I've taken quite a few walks here recently, um, about six months ago, seven months ago, um, walking around, I saw something incredible and I'll keep it short, uh, short because I am a fisherman and I like to tell stories, but um, I didn't know that there was a, a carryover trout population in there, and um, there was an angler with a very large rainbow trout um, that I would have never expected uh, to be caught in that lake. So um, very urban. Um, I would say this one is, is almost better for the bass fishing. Um, however, um, there are a few carryovers. Um, it doesn't get planted with trout um, every season. We, should, we certainly have to have good water or um, not be in a drought um, to get trout. But this one would get it uh, most likely in the springtime and kind of just uh, um, let it kind of fade out through, uh, through the summer because, again, it gets warm. All right, next is Rancho San Rafael Park Pond. Um, again, this is one of our very, very urban ponds. Um, it's right in the middle of one of the biggest parks or the biggest park in Reno. Um, it is next to the university, um, has a lot of potential. Um, unfortunately, um, low water uh, makes this one tough to, to stock. So it doesn't get stocked every year. However, when it does, it fishes really good for, um, for the spring and fall. So um, higher water years, we're starting out with a good one this year. Um, with any luck, we'll, we'll continue with our water and, and Rancho will get um, typically rainbow trout in the spring. And again, if there's water, they'll see it again in fall. I really like this one just because um, I can see in the picture there, it, it, it's kind of the hard arena. We have uh, the hot air balloon races and there's, there's just a lot that kind of goes on there and it's never really um, a focus as far as fishing. So um, keeping an eye on the planting or stocking reports um, and hitting that one when it's stocked can be a lot of fun, especially for the kids. And on to Sparks Marina. Um, this one is located, um, again, in a very urban uh, community pond here. It's at uh, the Legends uh, at Sparks, which is the biggest shopping center in Sparks. It's right next door. Um, Sparks Marina is um, a brief history. It was a pit for a number of years, um, cleaned up, um, gravel pit cleaned up. And when we had the floods 96, 97, filled um, with water. Um, the current level that it's at is, I think, about maybe 10 or 11 feet, 12 feet 
lower than it typically um, it would be. So the table, um, water table. So they actually pump, um, I think about a million gallons a day out of this place just to keep it at the level that it's at. But um, again, very urban, um, getting to be more popular for other species, excuse me, besides um, trout. So um, we plant it pretty heavily. It's kind of the kickoff. This, uh, this is kind of the kickoff of the season as far as um, when we start stocking um, a lot of our community ponds in the western part of the state. Um, and it, it starts pretty early um, some years. So, so end of March and um, in Mar end of March into April um, is typically when we see that one for the first time. And um, it, it will fish good um, for the spring. It, it's a pretty big piece of water. So oftentimes you know, we have a hard times. Uh, number one complaint is fish getting lost, but they're certainly still in there. Um, we've got some diehards that fish the, the fishing park there that, that do pretty well. One thing I definitely would like to mention about this one is um, if you are into it, there's some very, very large carp um, in this lake um, or in the marina. Um, so if that's your thing, this is a good place to do it. Um, there's also um, a good population of smallmouth on um, the southeast kind of corner there. There's some artificial stru structure that was put in a number of years ago and um, a pretty good population of, of bass kind of starting to show up. So. Lots of possibilities here. Um, you know, we keep talking about seeing the 20 pound brown trout out of this place, but um, this, is, uh, this is definitely the one that's capable of doing it. Very deep. Um, and again, the fishing typically takes place or is allowed on that Southern shoreline. So there's a fishing dock um, that's ADA accessible um, as well as some shoreline that you can kind of go after. All right. And out to Winnemucca. Um, I love talking about this one. This is one of our newest uh, community ponds, um, James Kenny Pond in Winnemucca. Um, it used to be the closest place you could go to get trout um, in a pond or lake was up at Bill Creek Reservoir. Um, and this addition uh, shortened that by about an hour. So uh, now Winnemucca has an urban pond. It's great. It's been, um, I see um, on the list there, it's Got rainbow trout, bluegill, channel catfish, largemouth bass. Um, I know that there's been at least 10 other species put into that thing. It's kind of like an aquarium of Nevada. Um, but really, for the most part, I think you're going to catch um, uh, the rainbow trout as well as um, some of the channel catfish um, for sure. Um, that is definitely what we're, um, what I've seen planted over the last year more often than anything else. Um, so Great new spot. Um, I like this one and kind of hate it at the same time because the water is crystal clear. Um, it is actually well water, so they're able to keep it pretty cool um, through the year. Um, my uh, assumption was it was water that had come in from um, the Humboldt, but it is not water from the Humboldt River. It is actually well water. So um, cooler water um, and very, very clear. So you can actually see a lot of the fish swimming around in this one. And there's definitely some bigger fish uh, in this one. Bathrooms that are on site, easy parking. Um, it's just a, a great addition um, to Winnemucca for sure. Yeah, this, um, this pond is so new that it's not on the map. So that's why I didn't zoom in that much. Oh, nice. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, looks I didn't like, realize that. Yeah, it's not there. Um, it looks like this Part of Winnemucca hasn't been updated on the map since 2014, but the picture helps. This is what it looks like. Definitely. Um, thank you, Jan. Those were um, some great, great spots to, to go out to if you are located in Western Nevada. Um, we have one more stop. We're headed out to Carlin, Nevada, which is just outside of Elko. Um, this is the urban pond just outside of Carlin, I'll zoom out a little. You can see it's right on this edge here. Um, this is the spot where we often, where the Eastern region, so the Elko office holds free fishing day um, out here at the Carlin Pond. Um, the Eastern region is full of fishable waters, just not necessarily community ponds. So while we're just highlighting this one, there are a lot of places to fish here and we're hopeful to get um, another urban fishery or community pond in the Eastern region pretty soon. Um, speaking of other fishable waters, before we end tonight, I want to show you 
our Fish NV website. So this is a really, really cool interactive fishable waters map. Um, so we've talked about different areas, different species, different types of bodies of water. Here on this website, you can filter for all of it. So I'll show you real quick. You can filter by region. So we'll do Eastern region. Um, a water type will look for lakes or reservoirs, and you'll see how the map changes here. You can zoom in as I filter. Um, and down on here, the fishable waters list also updates. So I'll scroll down. We'll click on wild horse. And then it pulls up um, a map of wild horse, gives you all the details here. It's in the eastern region, Elko County lists the species that are in this body of water. It lists nearby waters. And then if you scroll down, huh, this one doesn't have it, let me pick another one. They usually have, we'll do Southern region this time. Um, we'll pick Lake Mojave. When you scroll down, it'll show you the water record. So this is kind of cool. Um, so we'll have, look at this striped bass record was 63 pounds out of Lake Mojave at one point, an 11 pound largemouth bass, um, 30 pound carp, almost an eight pound smallmouth. So these are all records that people have submitted to the trophy fish program. So if you're an avid angler and you think that you can beat any of these records in your local body of water, um, be sure to visit our trophy uh, fish program. You can reach it by this Fish NV website. You can go to our Endow website. You can click here, um, but you'll see these are some names listed. Some, I mean, some of these dates go way back. Some are more recent. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that tool with you. It's a, it's a great way to figure out where you want to go and what you want to catch. But with that, do we have any questions that I missed, Abby, or anything that you'd like to add? I saw one there on possibly eating the game fish out of the ponds, and that might be good for all of us to answer. Um, I know in the western part of the state that that the the ponds that we have that three fish minimum or three fish limit on, and are managed as the put and take fisheries or the like as the the community ponds. Um, there is no concerns with the meat. It's kind of, I think a part of it, it's, it's, a, it's a high turnover. So the fish aren't spending a lot of time in that water um, absorbing those things. Yeah, same with us. Um, you'll definitely notice just the fish itself. So um, if they look healthy, they are healthy. And if they don't, I would not eat it. And please let us know. Um, um, I think it was on the last one, we kind of talked about botulism for a second. So it's, it's definitely something you'll notice. If, and that's honestly the biggest concern is just because of people feeding fish, like we started with this presentation and the water just gets really bad and the birds just take over the area and it just gets into the water. So I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't worry unless you definitely notice it. You'll definitely see a change in the water and the fish themselves. So um, the only water, well, one of the only waters uh, to worry about the mercury is in Ely, and that is also known as a huge mining town, and it's just naturally in the water. Just um, there's a lot, it's a heav heavily mineralized um, area with metals, and so um, because all of the fish are predatory fish and eat each other, um, it's just the fish naturally have mercury, but it's kind of like tuna too. You just limit it. Um, and so we do have the disclaimer on our website, depending on if it's trout bass or the pike. I think this was awesome. I'm very excited to do more Google Earth presentations with other divisions and hopefully share some new stuff with everybody at the next fish camp. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us for the second session tonight. Um, we do have one more tonight. It is bow fishing as conservation, and that starts at 7 p.m. Yes, thank you. If, yeah, if you guys have any more questions or 
think of anything, um, be sure to reach out to us. Like we mentioned, we're from all different regions. We can connect you with who you need to talk to to make sure that you, you get the best experience. All right, with that, I think we will sign off. Thanks again. Thanks, Jan and Abby. Thank you, everyone.